I'm on camera and one of my students is having a fun time laughing at me. And I don't want to say who it is. It's Emily. But it's not Emily. It's just... Anyway, um, this question is getting a lot of grief to a lot of students. And so we're going to lay this on the line and nail it. And no one's going to have any problem with it ever again. All right? So this is not page 349. It's number 42 and 43. And it starts out by describing temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius, okay? And it says, it reads as follows. So a temperature of 59 degrees Fahrenheit equals 15 degrees Celsius, and a temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit equals 20 degrees Celsius. What the heck does that have to do with these two questions? Um, Caroline, could you read that out loud for us, please? Find the linear equation with the ordered pairs F and C for these points. Good. Find the linear equation with ordered pairs F and C for these points. And once we do that, we're going to use the equation that we found in 42 to find the Celsius temperature when it's 77 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Okay? First things first, what do we do? We've got a word problem. We have some kind of situation where they're giving us information. How do we process it? What do we do with that information? Find the slope. Find the slope. Good idea. We have information. We have two sets of points. When we have two sets of points, we can use it, the formula of slope, to... It's 5 over 9. Okay, well, that's oh. fine, smarty pants. But, um, <laughs> but, but we need to do a little work for you know, everybody to understand how you get it, okay? Um, so Charlie, playing with his hair, is going to tell us... No, I got something in uh, your hair. Yeah, you got something in your hair. I'll already have hard. Um, <laughs> so, uh, all right, so now, what, what's the story? How do we find the slope? Do you remember the formula for slope, Bernadette? What was the formula for slope? Oh, is it um, y2 yes. minus y1 over x2 minus x2? All right, applause. Yeah. Woo! Good stuff. Woo! Awesome. Yes. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Now, but, but there's no y and there's no x here. It's f and c. What do we do? f and c. f and c. f and c. So like, but which one is which? Oh, I know. Okay, yes, Emily. Emily. C is X, no, C is Y, Yes. and um, F is X. Yes, X, uh, F represents the X value, and C represents the Y value. Is that fair enough? Does, does everybody see that? Taylor, yeah. got that? All right, so knowing that, we can actually tell what F1, F2 are, and C1, C2 are. So Jonathan, what's this? F, X. F1, oh. what would be the role of X1, right? And this would be what? Y. Yeah, it would be the Y value, okay? Um, but and this is X and this is Y. But this would be C1, right? Because there's two points. Oh, you didn't see it. F and C, right? So what would this be? 68 degrees Fahrenheit would be what? F2. F2. I hope you're writing down all these little things. And C2, fair enough? Uh -huh. F1, C1, F2, C2. We're making our steps in our way to be able to use the formula, which is, as Bernadette said, M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which translates into our problem is the same thing as saying what? In F and C terms. 20 minus. No, 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 no. In F and C terms. Bernadette. M equals C2 minus C1. Are you sure? You might be right. I just want to make sure you're sure. Okay, are you sure you're sure? Well, yeah. yeah, there you go. You've been in school a long time. You know what teacher's tricks are all about. So C2 minus C1 over what? F2 minus F1. Oh, almost. Gosh, I thought you had it. Almost. Now, what is it that you got wrong there? Nothing. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, good. C2 minus C1 over F2 minus F1. Good job. Now, what do we do now, Nadia? No idea? Alexis, are you following this? Yep. Okay. What values do we put in? See um, how smart we were? We named them ahead of time. We put these in at the beginning. Okay. All right, so. Well, um, you would put in um, the XY2 value. Yeah, okay, that's right. Minus um, 15 equals 
five. And then the F2 value, 68 minus 59, which, which would equal nine. Yeah, that's right. So we've got F1, F2. So we'll put them in here. Okay, go ahead. We're going to put C2, as she said, is 20 minus C1, uh, which is equal to 15 over 68 minus 59. Does everybody see where we got those? That's the key right now. So you see it all, Jonathan? You see it all kind of making sense? You can zoom out a bit so you can see it all. This right here, all this information here is going to go right into here. Okay. You see that? Yeah? Good. See it, Lupe? So that information, it's really key to be able to figure out F and C is X and Y. If you don't get that straight at the beginning, big headache. Big headache. But it's not a hard question once you figure out this, how to straighten it all out. And if you forget the formula for slope, I'm sorry, you're, you're not going to get it. But if you remember your basics, you'll get it. You'll be fine. It's not hard. 20 minus 15 equals what? Well, this is where Caroline comes in. 20 minus 15 equals? 5. And 68 minus 9 is? 9. So there it is. In fact, I'm going to just do it. I'm going to take up too much space. Well, what is that, though? That's not the answer to everything. That's just a slope. What do we have to do? Why yeah, that we have to find, yeah, we have to get y equals mx plus b, right? Or we could do y minus y1 equals m onto x minus x1. Remember the point slope form? We've got the slope, and we have a point, right? We've got lots of points, so do you, which one do you want to do? Let's do, let's do that. y minus y1 equals m onto x minus x1. But in the, in the case of our problem, what's x and y? We're not really using x and y. We're using yeah. f and c. So what should we put for y minus y1? F and C. Yeah, but how would we write it? Um, C minus C1 equals m on to f minus f1. Good. Everybody see that? That's the equation we're using. We've modified it from our mx or you know xy equation. We've modified it. And why did we use this one? Because we have our slope and we have a point. So point slope form. Yes. We're not really using x and y. We're using yeah. f and c. So what should we put for y minus y1? f and c. Yeah, but how would we write it? Um, c minus c1 equals m on to f minus f1. Good. Everybody see that? That's the equation we're using. We've modified it from our mx or you know xy equation. We've modified it. And why did we use this one? Because we have our slope and we have a point. So point slope form. Yes. Okay, so one of the other problems we did not say that equation that the y would be equal to x minus x. Yeah. Okay. So if we have the equation when you when the problem gives you given points, that's the only time you use that equation? You use this equation when you're given the slope and one point. Or and if you're given two points, that's fine too, because with two points you find out the slope, and then you use one of the points, it doesn't matter which one, and you can use that equation. And remember, you don't have to use this unless they tell you you have to use it. You could use y equals mx plus b as well. Either way. It's just that last time we used y equals mx plus b to solve it, and this time we're going to use this one. You do need to know both ways. Okay. And you've got to remember the difference between point-slope form of the equation and y-intercept form of the equation. So that when they ask you, use this one or that one, you know what to do. Okay? Slope-intercept form of the equation. What is the slope-intercept form of the equation? Taylor? What is the slope-intercept form of the equation? Fantastic. What is the point-slope form of the equation, Lupe? C minus C1 equals That's right. Or, or, well, we know it as y minus y1 equals m onto x minus x1. That's the point-slope form. Because it has a point and the slope. See the difference? 